I just wired my entire three bedroom house all by myself. I just got the green sticker and I wanted to walk through and share with you what I learned in this process. I actually did not initially pass inspection, but I had a really nice inspector that told me the few corrections that I needed to make. And he said he was just going to go down the road and that I could call him as soon as I was done with a few of the minor things that he wanted me to work on. And then he would come back and approve me. And that is what he did. I want to talk about those few very minor things that I needed to change. And also just my experience as a DIYer, not necessarily a licensed electrician, but I was able to wire my entire house and pass the inspection for the rough in. So this house is in Detroit, Michigan. It's a house that I bought from the Detroit Land Bank. Um, in the process of wiring this, I really sweated a lot of the small things, just like this box here. Like, is there too many wires coming into this box? Do I have them anchored correctly? Uh, what's he going to say about all that? But he really didn't seem to pay a lot of attention to that. Ironically, it was this, the, the one thing was this fire stop for wires gone from the second floor to the third floor, from the basement to the first floor. Just uh, spray foam in the holes where the wires pass through. Um, and I asked him, I said, what, like, practically, why are we doing this? And, he, and I guess it has to do with the, the draft. Uh, in, in the case of a fire, stopping the draft, of course. But I said, in the case of an open stairway, which is what I have, what, I mean, what, what are we talking about? He just laughed. He said he, he doesn't really know. He said it doesn't make sense, but it's, uh, it's code, and he needs me to put spray foam in the holes where my wires are going uh, between floors. So this is where it all started for me. I put my own meter socket in. I did all the prep work that I needed to do for my electric company to come and make the connection uh, underground here. I ran the conduit, uh, did everything that I needed to do, prepping it, ran the service cable um, into the basement to a 200 amp panel in the basement. So actually a lot easier than you might think and very possible to do as a DIYer. So this was one of the things I was sweating more than anything else is I really wasn't sure uh, how many receptacles I can put on uh, 15 amp circuits, how many uh, circuits that I needed in my kitchen, et cetera. Um, and so I'll just show you what I did here. And there was one small thing that I needed to change in order to pass. And that was in my kitchen. Uh, kitchen I had the refrigerator on a dedicated circuit which I really thought was necessary um, and then I had one 20 amp circuit for all of the countertop receptacles um, and he wanted to see two circuits on the small appliances and countertop circuits uh, or countertop receptacles sorry and so he basically just asked me to tie one of the countertop receptacles into the refrigerator circuit so that I had two 20 amp circuits feeding the countertop receptacles. Um, and it was easy enough to change. Um, I, you know, one of the countertop receptacles ended up being really close to the refrigerator. And so I just took from the refrigerator circuit right up into that and I was good to go. Uh, but apart from that, everything I did right here in the panel passed. He didn't ask too many questions about anything. Uh, and basically what I did uh, upstairs, I have a 15 amp circuit for every single bedroom. And I knew that that was gonna, I, I knew that I wasn't gonna have any problems there. Um, so that, that takes care of four 15 amp circuits here in my box, um, three bedrooms and then a spare room. And then I have a 15 amp circuit for the attic and the hallway. Uh, I have two 20 amp circuits next to that, uh, bathroom upstairs and powder room. And then these two down here are just 
to uh, as a 20 amp and a 30 amp double pull for mini split heating and cooling that I'm doing. Um, I put four uh, like general lighting and receptacle 15 amp breakers for the first floor. Um, I have a smoke detector receptacle that's tied into my basement lights um, because they say that you should put uh, some lights onto that receptacle or uh, sorry onto that circuit so that you know if there's a problem with that circuit um, if you just put your smoke detectors on a dedicated circuit uh, there could be an issue there that you're never going to know about i know you're supposed to test your smoke detectors as well and that would tell you but uh, they said it's a good idea just time into uh, some lights somewhere so i put my basement lights onto the circuit with my smoke detectors um, and then i have another 15 amp circuit for a circulator pump that's gone in for our hydronic floor heat. Um, and then I've got four 20 amp circuits for the kitchen. Uh, and I already told you about the one that was an issue. Uh, he wanted two 20 amp circuits for the countertop receptacles. Uh, but basically what I, what I had was a dedicated 20 amp for the refrigerator, a dedicated 20 amp for the microwave, and then a 20 amp was doing my dishwasher and my uh, garbage disposal. And then I had one more 20 amp doing all my countertop receptacles. And the only issue with any of that was that he wanted a second 20 amp circuit feeding countertop receptacles, um, which we basically took care of by just um, tying into that refrigerator. Um, circuit so this is in the kitchen this is where my refrigerator is and then there's a countertop circuit right up here to the right and he basically just asked that i take this uh countertop receptacle i work very well because it was the second to last in line i have another one that was tied into that down here uh just on the corner of the kitchen but it's kind of the only other receptacle in the kitchen i just had put that in there with it so he basically just asked that i take this receptacle and this one countertop receptacle and tee off into the refrigerator uh, circuit and then he was good with all of that for the rest of the kitchen um, there's a number of countertop receptacles all tied into that one 20 amp circuit he was good with all that so like i said everything else with the way that i um the amount of circuits that i have and the way i i put them in he was he was good with everything else so one of the other things that came into question and he acted as if he was going to fill me on at first was this here is my dining room which i have on a 15 amp circuit and apparently now the dining room needs a 20 amp circuit and so i explained to him when he told me that that there was going to be a peninsula coming out right here because the kitchen and dining room kind of runs together uh if you <clears throat> if i step back here you can see that is basically a kitchen and dining room and then right out under that beam there's a peninsula coming out and i said well you know we're going to have a peninsula with some bar stools this kind of counts as a dining area right in here i have a 20 amp circuit and uh he was like ah yeah okay okay so he he left that go only because um i said that that was you know that should count as a dining area and i have a 20 amp circuit and so he the inspector was okay with it at that point um but for the future, I would run a 20 amp in the entire dining room area. Apparently that is, I was just completely unaware of that, but apparently that is code now. And then in the living room area, everything was fine. It didn't seem to be any problems. The only thing was, this is uh, going out the front door and I hadn't put an outdoor receptacle in the front. 
was only in the back. And so here yeah, uh, it is code to have one in the back and the front. I'm not even sure why I hadn't put one in the front because it does make sense to actually put one out there. And so he just asked that I add a receptacle in the front and I just tied right into the circuit that was running right past there with the outdoor uh, lights being right here. And then it was coming right down around there, and I just tied right into that and just brought my wires right out here. And I was able to do all that while he went and just uh, waited on me. I, I don't know what he was doing, but um, he just took off for a while until I was able to make those changes. Another area that I was very uncertain as to whether he was going to be okay with everything was on this. These closet walls where they uh, built the closets with the, uh, the studs turned the opposite way, so inch and a half walls. And so I use these 13 cubic inch boxes um, that end up being a little crowded with wires when you actually have three wires coming into it. And I wasn't sure if that was going to pass. I tried to do some research as to how many wires you can take into a 13 cubic inch box. And I was really concerned that that was going to be an issue. That ended up never being an issue at all. The stud guards here I was concerned about because on these walls, I had to take two of these and just put them beside each other vertically. And I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be getting a bigger metal plate to cover that all up, uh, but that ended up not being an issue at all. Um, again, a lot of the small stuff that I sweated really was not an issue. So overall, this was a great experience. I would totally do this again. I could have hired an electrician and I'm sure they would have done it faster. Um, I did save myself a lot of money, even though it took me longer to do this myself, of course. Um, and I learned a lot along the way. Um, it did come with some headaches and some uh, frustration along the way, uh, just trying to figure some of it out and trying to decide exactly how to run certain things. But in the end, I know exactly what's behind my walls. I know exactly how everything's done. I'm super glad that I decided to do this all by myself. I would totally do it again. Uh, I, I love the experience. I love to learn new things. And so um, hopefully this can be encouragement for you to go and wire your own house.